Hello and welcome everyone. Happy New Year. We're into 2019 and it's all the same really from us. It's uh, <laughs> tech of the month and it's January. Uh, we're right in the middle of miserable season really. Wet As a cyclist. Cold. Yep. Yeah. It's yep. cold, dark and wet. Uh, but we have some great product and we are, what have we got? I've been out of the job for a week or so now. I, don't, yeah, yeah, I literally yeah. don't know what's going on. So <laughs> come on, Bracey, save us. What product well, have you got? Because obviously this is January and it is wet and cold, I've naturally brought a pair of shorts. Of course you have. You yes. are a genius, mate. Absolutely, absolutely. And these are not just any shorts. These are the latest ASOS S9 shorts. So ASOS have been raving about these. They have been, yeah. yeah. So um, they're now available. So January is the time that this short is available. So obviously we're all thinking about training camps, we're all thinking about warm weather. So it's a perfect time to get your shorts really. Um, so basically this is a complete redesign of their top end short. A few things about it. First of all, this has been designed around a new pad and a new way of holding the short up as well. Last year's were purple, which is a bit of a weird colour for a pad. This has gone to a nice traditional grey. Um, but it's designed to be lighter and less bulky than the S7, but for the same level of comfort. Okay. So that's the biggest thing about it. And as you can see, there's a few features that remain the same. So they've got this golden gate. I so, love that. I know. The golden gate. The golden, but basically all it means is the central part of the, the short isn't stitched. So you can see I can put my hand all the way through here. And so it means that obviously it, it moulds your body a little bit better. So the, the, the idea is the pad stays to you rather than Absolutely. the short. So if the short moves, then the pad doesn't move. The, sh the pad stays there. The worst thing, well, I say the worst thing. What you find is because there's so much material, it does cosset and really... <laughs> It holds everything really nicely. We're, we're learning a lot here. about James Bracey's yeah. junk here. <laughs> and it uses a different type of foam. So it uses something called Microshock foam, which is uh, more breathable. And as you can see at the front as well, loads of bigger perforated holes. So it should be a, a cooler pad than the old S7, okay. which was incredibly comfortable. But at sometimes, especially during the summer, it did feel a little bit like you were wearing a bit of a nappy. It could get a bit sweaty, right. couldn't it? Uh, the old S7s, uh, the Equipe yes. S7s, uh, the cheaper versions, 130 quid, I thought they were a great pair of shorts. Mm. Uh, for the price, you got fantastic performance oriented shorts. I thought the chamois was good. I thought the construction was you know, well fitting and holding and the bibs were nice. How do they make this even better? So you've got a bit of a funny design at the back, right? Yeah, there is. There's this new uh, new change in terms of how the straps are done. So this is what they call A-lock engineering. So you'll see that the straps don't just like sort of finish at the, the, the end of the, of the top of the short. They go further down and they also then help to stabilise everything. So this is the biggest thing about this short is it effectively should be the most stable short on the market. So no matter how much you move around, the short should stay in place. So that's what they say this design is designed to do. And I've, I've, ridden, this, I've ridden these shorts for f quite a few months now. And honestly, it works. So how much are these? Yeah. We so that's the biggest difference is that is the Equip RS, which is the lower price one. They've gone up there 175 pounds now. Yeah. But, you know, in terms of shorts, it does seem like quite a lot of money, but for a short that's going to be as comfortable as you're ever going to need, then, you know, it's it's worth it. Yeah, I, I'm not fighting against these shorts at all. I've used them a couple of times. Uh, not the same pair as you, James. No, um, I've used uh, these uh, shorts a couple of times on a turbo because during the winter I've not, not ridden shorts outdoors. Um, and they are very good. Mm. They're very good. Uh, my sort of qualm with it is the the old S7s, as, as I pointed out, were very, very good. I, I'm struggling to see these are... 50 quid better because the old uh, S7s were 130 quid. 130, yeah, so it's so 45 it's, pounds difference. Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of, you know, I, you know, I, I think they're very good, but I like, I, you know, I think to, to truly understand the benefit of those, you would have had to have a pair of shorts that weren't yeah. very good, which Absolutely. there's there's loads out there in the market. Um, but if I think if you put on a pair of Asos shorts, and I think we, we're all happy to say that if you want to buy a very good quality pair of shorts and you've got the money, 
ASOS is the brand to go to yeah. because everyone just loves them uh, and they last and they're comfortable and they fit well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me to sort of step up uh, to the latest model and then get that hit of money, I, I'm a bit dubious. Right, I'm going to go next because I've actually brought something that's useful for this bad weather, <laughs> unlike you. Uh, so I've brought this. Happy New Year. Happy uh, New Year, James. <laughs> good, to, good to see you again, mate. Uh, I've brought this absolute unit that is the Santini Vega Extreme. So you've been going jacket. on about this. I've been a hell of a lot. banging on about this a lot. To anyone that would listen, quite literally not anyone that, that would not listen. Not that many though, is it? Really? <laughs> yeah, I, had to, I had to, I was just yeah. stuck in a room yeah. with it. Um, and this jacket is in our editor's choice. Mm. Uh, and for very good reason. So this is Santini's beast of a do-it-all winter jacket. So this is for people that are going to be riding outside no matter the weather. Well, discounts in then, Discounts, so, Simon. Probably yeah. discounts me, really. Okay, okay. Um, so this is made out of Polar's wind block fabric. So as you can see, it's it's really thick and it's got this kind of nice... It's got like a waffle... It's got like a waffle design yeah. on it, which makes it really, really windproof. But it traps air in it as well. Traps air in it as well. Yeah, so once it's... anything, Any heat that's in there can't get away. So it's super warm. It's really, really warm. And, uh, and it's also incredibly waterproof. And I was, I was like, it can't be that waterproof because it's not like a hard shell. Uh, but, it soft, like, soft shell, isn't it? but for a soft shell, it is amazingly waterproof. So waterproof, actually, that I'm going to demonstrate. With oh, my, with I my, love a With rip, my cup of water. Demonstration. So got it here. Ready for you all. You can everyone see. Uh, you yeah. can just about see. A cup see. of water, one that I made earlier. And we're just going to pour it on. Whoa. Look at the beading. Look at that. That's amazing. Whoa. Oh, it's all on me. Oh, it's, oh, it's gone inside my shoe. <laughs> oh, Rupert. You can tell we didn't practice this, didn't you? This. <laughs> oh. So is this a coating on the fabric or is this actually part of the, no. the fabric itself? So it's the way it's built. Oh. So it's a free layer construction cool. of this, which uh, basically means that the waterproofing is built into the jacket. Which is good Which for is like good. long term. It's good use. for long term yeah. and it's good for people that need to wash it a lot as well because that's one of the things is that when you're riding in a heavy jacket like this, you just tend to get a bit smelly inside there. Because well, it's, it's, so it's one use, isn't it? You know, if, you, if you're going out in, in the rubbish weather, um, you know, if you haven't got a mudguard or you're riding somewhere without mudguards, you're covered in yeah. mud and crud from the road. You, you have to wash these yeah. things after one ride. It's not, it's not a case of, oh, I'll be fine. No. It's no, I've been out in here for exactly. two, three hours. It needs washing. There's only so much Febreze you can get away with before people refuse to, uh, to, to ride with you. But it's quite cool, though, because like, this stuff looks to be pretty wiped clean as well. Yeah, so it is really neat, actually. Um, so it's got this long tail here. So that sits down around your bum. Although I must say, when I was riding in it, I did find it actually tended to do Flap kind of have a like right. mind of its own. That bit did a bit. But this is really cool. So this is like a waterproof central pocket. And this is a zip on there. So this is for your phone and your wallet. Uh, basically gives you that bit of extra peace of mind for when you're out riding in the rain, which is really nice and waterproof. This has a brilliant fit on the arms, which... Uh, has been lacking on so many jackets that I've had to test because I've got really long arms and they obviously, most jackets will f just try and fit people with normal length arms, not freaks like me and you. Um, <laughs> or like you, average size. Yeah, so this right. <laughs> immediately went to my number one winter jacket because it actually fits, which is really They're nice. They're shaped as well, aren't they? And they are shaped and they've got like a little cut bit there. So, so you, is it longer on the top? It's then? longer on the top so when you're so you do, do yep, this yep. and do that and move these around. You've got the added protection. There is nothing Santini hasn't thought about with this, which is so cool. Probably the one thing that I'm, I'm preempting what our, our viewers will probably yeah. say next, it's black. So winter yeah. jackets, black. You are right. And in my review, I did pull them up on this because this is actually the only colour option that they have, which I think is a bit silly. And, uh, but it does, you know, have some reflective detailings. So. What's the price? The price of this is two hundred and ten pounds, which, you know, isn't right, as, yeah, it's not that as expensive right. as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, if you um, look at our winter jackets test just before Christmas, mm. um, most, if not all, were two fifteen, two ten oh, plus. Uh, thanks, Rupert. That is um, that's a good jacket. Yeah, it's a brilliant. That's a really good jacket. Mm. I am quite jealous, actually. Yeah, I have got something. 
I have got something, and it's something brand new from big American brand, Specialized. Uh, and it's two months in a row that I've brought a Specialized product. That is true. That is true. It's, but a, black, it's a black box. It is another black box. This yep. one doesn't say top secret on it, uh, um, like the last one. And these are a brand new pair of shoes, high-end shoes, uh, S-Works shoes. Ba -ba -bum. Rupert won't have any interest in these, but James Bracey. Hang on, mate. They've got you tread on them. Yeah, you don't ride those on the road. I'll give one to you, James. You, James, you've you've seen these, and yes. you're a keen-eyed viewer of their launch. I've had last the last month. few iterations of their top-end off-road shoes. Yep, um, and they are. Very similar, as you can see, to the road-going version S-Works. Uh, and that's because they use similar technologies. So their upper uh, is sort of malleable. It's, it's a, a product that they use to get the stiffness, uh, durability, because uh, it's 15 times stronger than steel, remember? Mm -hmm. um, but it can be sort of molded and shaped to your foot, so it isn't uncomfortable. Um, the new S-Works road shoe, uh, we like. They're not yeah. our most favorite. Um, road they're, they're, shoe they're, of 2018. They're right for certain people, I yeah. think, aren't they? Yeah, and they're very performance orientated, yeah. like super high end, which I imagine these are going to be like. I've not spent too much time with these. Like the road going shoes or the road going versions of the S Works, uh, you get two bow dials, mm -hmm. um, the proprietary bow dials that uh, only come with specialized S Works shoes. The metal, aren't they? So, they in terms of like robustness, they're pretty damn good. Yeah, and on the Perfect road, we, we haven't had any problem longevity no, terms. No. Uh, I haven't, I've been using the shoes all last year. And I don't have any concerns about these going amiss um, out riding. So these shoes uh, weigh for a size 42, which is an average man size, by the way. Me, just say. Very average. Um, Very average. 200, <laughs> 270 grams each. So okay. under 600 grams for a pair of off-road shoes, uh, which is very competitive. Very light. Uh, considering yep. they have uh, grips uh, and places for your studs. Uh, yep if you need extra long ones. Um, reinforced toe mm -hmm. area, just in case you know you, you stub a tree. You often kick roots. Which, which I've done occasionally yeah. Yeah. and it hurts. And I usually fall off after that point. Uh, and uh, with the bow dies. Metal bow dies. They, uh, um, they use titanium in these bits as well, so to try and lose a bit of weight, which okay. is good. Yep. That is a bit of expert MBR knowledge there, um, which I didn't know. Um, and for that, lightweightness and technology, uh, you'll have to pay £325. I put that, I put that back down. I, I, I was going to say, gonna say that's like uh, £162.50 right there. Are you an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> We've got it, it's in, we've got it. <laughs> it's not, it's true. £162.50 is half of £325. Anyway. Thank you very much. Um, I, they're, not, they're not for sale individually. Oh. Um, you, they, they come as a pair. Okay. Um, so it's, you pay the £325, but that is a lot of money. Uh, and is. for someone like me that off-roads occasionally isn't fully dedicated to cyclocross or racing, um, that, is, that is a lot of money to spend. Going into bike of the month, and we've got the lovely Cornago oh, C. Who put that there? Uh, you may as well start as you mean to go on in 2019. It's pretty right? subtle, isn't it? Uh, you wouldn't notice a that. With <laughs> 10,000 pound bike. Nothing new for 2019 uh, or 2018, actually, uh, other than the beautiful cassette that is attached mm. to it. So this is the super duper, hence the price tag. Yep, it's the big news. It's yeah. the big news. Big news. It what is the Roops? It is Campag. Nolo's 12 speed super record. Oh. I know. And it has been around for quite a while. I think we first saw it in April of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, but as always with group sets, it always takes a little while to actually come about. And now it is shipping out on bikes and look at it. It is it's stunning, isn't it? It's amazing. It's and if you can't tell, that cassette does have an extra gear. I counted them. <laughs> <laughs> what is it at the back? So an 11? It is an 11 to 32. Okay. On that, which, which is a leaf, is, isn't it? A bit of a and it's um a bit of a shake up for Campag as well. Yeah, yeah, because they don't believe in anything. No. Um, Twenty nine, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You don't need. You, you need a fifty three. Fifty three thirty nine. That's kind of what's interesting about this group set is that it is twelve speed, but it is only eleven to thirty two, which Shimano have been doing as an eleven speed, and Shram has been doing as eleven speed for ages now. So shifting on it, it is. It's really lovely to shift on because it's like just such tiny steps 
the whole time. It'd be perfect for people that are racing and stuff like that. Yeah. But for those hoping that 12 speed would be like a 10 to 52 or something, no. It's a pretty... Not from Campag, not anyway. From, it's a Campag. modest from revolution from Campag, this, really. But the mechanics of Campag Nolo, it's, it's always been That's amazing. special. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those cliches that's sort of like, if you, if you love your bike and you love your group sets, then and you love Campag yeah. and Italy, you, you have to go Campag Nolo. You'll never, ever use any other group set. Um, us not being biased in any shape, way or form. Um, we'd probably say a heart with Campag Nolo, but our minds and, and sort of brains go, you need to go Shimano. Each has uh, got their, their own merits really, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's... so we need to talk about the Cornago frame, um, the C64, obviously celebrating 64 years of Cornago. Um, plenty of people have been to the factory, enjoyed the tours. We've had plenty of features in the magazine previously, uh, but they're still using traditional Methods. Methods. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's the lug design. So the carbon tubes going into carbon lugs, uh, which they used to use on steel frames uh, back in the day with Eddie Merckx and the likes riding them. So yeah, the C64 moves slightly away from the fully lugged design that we saw on the C60. So the seat um, tube is kind of like a large lug in itself. So it's not lugged at the top into the, the the top tube uh, and the seat stays, so it's kind of just one piece there. Um, so that's one extra lug <laughs> that you're doing away with. Um, and the tubes are also wider and stiffer than the C60s, um, claiming the frame is over just over 200 grams lighter. And I'm going to go totally superficial here, but that paint job is amazing. Yeah, that is a very it jazzy is, colour scheme. It's sweet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that is because it's a limited run, mm. I think. That's correct. Which is why the tyres are still clean, because you're not allowed to ride it. Yeah. No, we, yeah. They, it came with a very big note. Going, it did. <laughs> Do not ride. Rupert's like... <laughs> Which was immediately <laughs> accidentally <laughs> lost. <laughs> what an utterly beautiful machine. Amazing, it it, it does it? look super good. Yeah. And if you've got that type of money, which none of us here have, um, you know, it, it's a great opportunity to ride such a historic, and, uh, historic bike. 6.9 kilos. Yes, yeah, sorry, I did forget about weight. You kind of forget about <laughs> You do, it's Talking not the first thing you think It's almost irrelevant, isn't it, yeah. really? Yeah. So yeah. Which like, is, you know, uh, pretty light. Six yeah, yeah. They're, they're never going to be the lightest. Like, lug, lug frames no. are definitely never going to be the lightest. Yeah, not with that but... much blue paint on it. <laughs> right. Blue is the heaviest colour. <laughs> and the additional gear, it's amazing they got it below seven. Yeah, well, eight, really. Yeah. Good work. No, cool an amazing it. bike, isn't it, really? It is. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, that concludes us for the first instalment of Tech of the Month and Bike of the Month for 2019. I'm so pleased we're back. You know? I know. I yeah. can't believe we've actually made it. We're ready you know? for another year. And this I'm be fully stoked for what's buzzing. coming this year. There's so many exciting projects coming up, which you guys will get to see and hear about very shortly. But until then, we'll see you next time. Can I do throat singing? Thank you, big boob lady. <laughs> 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 <Last> way. <laughs>